More answers presented by Mazda BT50. More is more. Hello again, Russell Barwick alongside Sam Kegovich for our weekly look at what's happening in the world of AFL thanks to our great mates at Mazda and the BT50. Question, as we start to look at the final... Without eight, notice? ...eight, final four, can a team outside the top four win it? In a word, no. Can a team outside the top three win it? Uh, no. Right. So it's clearly a... It's a race in three, you're dead right. Hawthorne, Geelong, Sydney Swans. Yep. Now, depending upon... You've the got to Dockers understand... make the top four, they get a second week at home. Yeah, they'll be... They'll be nuisance value. They haven't got the... They haven't got they the... They play Hawthorne or first well, yeah. week. And, and they, they can... just don't have the class at this stage. Let Scoring me ability. They don't have the scoring ability or the class. You need class in September. They've got all those wonderful attributes about tying it down, contested ball, but at the end of the day, in September, you need a touch of... Class. Class. Thank you very much. Of the three teams, then, who's your tip? Geelong, uh, Sydney or the favourites, Hawthorne? And Hawthorne have got the best of the draws going forward, mm. although in the last uh, couple of weeks, Sydney played Geelong and Hawthorne, so that'll be a nice gauge of where they sit. Look, there's very little between them. Whoever you pick, you can build a strong case for. But I personally like Hawthorne. I'm still a firm believer that once you get stung the year before, and that was a yep. bad loss last year, there'll be no-one at Hawthorne will rest until redemption is total. I agree. And that will act as a wonderful spur to all and sundry. Now, you may well argue that, OK. But my point is Hawthorne are great going forward, but the other two teams are also so tough and hard oh, at no the doubt. footy in a low-scoring game. Mm. I would back Geelong and Sydney in a low-scoring game every single day. In a high-scoring game, Ruffy and Buddy and, and, and Mitchell they and these guys. Around, but they've got a lot of yeah, strike power, yeah. Bruce, all these guys just go nuts. I'm not so sure that uh, Alistair Clarks will be mindful of all that. You know, they'll be up to speed defensively. I know what you're alluding to. How but, bad uh, would he be if they lost two in a row? Oh, <laughs> well, not only that, but they gave another one away previously, so that would be and a thorn in their at side. At the other end of the scale, and now a lot of conjecture about who should go where, I'm of the opinion that GWS, if a deal came along where they picked up some four or five players and had to offload the number one draft pick, and I mean four or five really good players, and let's say it went to Sydney, who've got an excess of players, they should trade... Potentially Tom Boyd and the number one draft pick. Uh, I agree with you there. They've I got enough number ones yeah. in there to, to fill up. And I certainly wouldn't be pool. pursuing putting all my eggs into one basket with Buddy. As great a player as Buddy Franklin is, Someone's I think it would be a bad. It would be a bad deal for both parties. I honestly mean that, regardless of the pot of gold. They need a superstar they to build need, the game up. Yeah, though. but they also need a, a spread of talent mm. to expedite the development of the young kids. You can't have the young kids of talent being pummeled in the submission week in, week out, because all you're going to do is you're mm. going to shorten their careers. And and you've got to have a winning mentality. And the number one uh, bloke at the moment at the GWS is their full forward, so that uh, takes great it player, away. Great talent. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out over the next couple of weeks and obviously post-September. Uh, that'll do it for this week. Hope you enjoyed our look at AFL. We'll see you next week. Thanks to the Mazda BT50.